an amazing story coming out of the suburbs of Dallas. Charlotte Brown, a junior at Emory Reigns High School, finished fourth in the pole vault competition for the Women's Track and Field State Championships in Texas. And as great as an accomplishment as that is, Charlotte's story is so much more because she has had to battle so many more obstacles in her competition. Charlotte has achieved her success in the pole vault while also being blind. Her triumph possesses so much inspiration and so much courage to talk about it. She joins us right now. Charlotte, thank you so much for climbing on board with us. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Now, I have to ask, how did you become interested in pole vaulting? I became interested in pole vaulting when I was in seventh grade uh, at our, one of our junior high track practices. Our coach asked us all to pick a field event, and nobody was really over at the pole vault area, and it seems fun and dangerous, so I kind of decided on it at that moment. It's, it's funny you mentioned dangerous. Your parents, I mean, they were obviously concerned about your safety, but they never shot you down. They, they were always very supportive with you. And, and, and do you mind just talking a little bit about how much their support has meant to you as you've gone through high school with this? Yes. Um, they have definitely always been supportive of what I wanted to do, whether it be academically or athletically. So, you know, when I wanted to pull ball, I had already practiced for a few weeks before I actually told them I was going to do it. But um, definitely when I told them and I realized I had their support, it's definitely meant a lot, you know, having them encourage me and having having them behind me every step of the way. So it's definitely been good having that. Have you ever feared getting injured because you are blind? Uh, I really haven't, I guess. Consistency is my main thing. You know, I'm a pretty mathematical person, and I count my steps when I pull vault, when I run, and things like that. So, you know, in all reality, it doesn't seem like it, but I really don't have much greater of a risk getting hurt than someone who could see because everything is so precise. And, and you talk about the mathematics of it. Can you take us through the process and how you can pole vault without seeing? I take off my um, lid that goes on my chalk container, which is the chalk that you use for your hands when you pole vault. And I put that on my mark instead of using tape because most other vaulters use tape, but since I can't see that, um, I put the lid right there so I can feel it. And then my mark is 80 feet from the box, which is where you plant. And so I feel the chocolate and I take off and it's seven less strides. For me, I count every other one because if you're trying to count every one, it just goes a little too quickly. So I count every other stride and when I get to seven, then I take off. The one thing I found that was so special was between your sophomore and junior year, you went from being legally blind to completely blind. When, when that happened, was there any part of you that felt like it was time to throw in the towel or you, or you were down on yourself and you felt like giving up? Um, when I, at, towards the end of my sophomore year, I noticed my vision kind of getting a little bit worse. And so, you know, of course, I love pole vaulting and I love sports. And so I knew that it's, it's really a part of me. So I knew that's not something that I would ever want to give up. And so um, before I actually got Vader, um, I noticed my sight starting to get a little bit worse. And at that time, I just started to brainstorm kind of new ideas. And I thought of, you know, the upcoming year, my junior year. And I thought, you know, if there's a chance that I'm not going to be able to see at all by that point, I need to have a plan so that I'm not, you know, trying to figure out half the season, you know, spend half the season trying to figure out what was going to work. So um, I definitely never thought, you know, that I was going to give it up because I like it so much. So you finished in fourth place in the pole vaulting competition in the state championships in Texas. That's quite an accomplishment, sight or no sight. But some of the local newspapers that were covering the meet quoted you as saying that you were disappointed with your finish because you came up one spot shy of meddling. Now, Texas has the most girls of the entire nation competing in outdoor track and field. How do you not just take fourth place as a moral victory, especially the fact that you're blind and the rest of your competition can see? Uh, I think definitely uh, when you bring up the disappointed factor of it, I think as an athlete, as a competitor, you know, anytime you don't get first, you're going to be, you're going to have somewhat of a disappointment factor in that because, of course, as a competitor, you want to win and winning is fun and, you know, things like that. So, you know, I wish I would have gone higher at the state meet, but when I look at it um, in perspective to last year, you know, I went a foot higher than I did last year. And, you know, it just overall was less nerve-wracking because I had already been there once and things like that. So it was definitely um, good to be there for a second time and to have another experience. But um, when I'm vaulting, you know, I really don't think about what, you know, the other girls are doing and things like that just because pole vault is such an individual sport and it's so technical and I think it takes so much focus that if you spend time 
you know, focusing on what everybody else is doing and, you know, this person may be going, you know, a foot higher than you, but, you know, it's the, I think the most important thing is to focus on what's going on in the moment and the jump you're on at that time because, you know, especially in pole vault, anybody can have a bad day and every, anybody can have a good day. So, you know, in all reality, of course, everybody wants to have, you know, a good day when somebody else has a bad day, but that doesn't always happen. So, especially when you get to something like the state meet, everyone's, everyone's wanting to have a good day. You seem so focused. You seem solid as a rock. You, whether it's being blind or, or your competition, nothing rattles you. Is there anything that you do in your day-to-day life that kind of helps you stay focused and not worry about all these things? I think the biggest thing to stay focused, I guess, is it's not so much. It's not so much staying focused isn't so much a challenge for me as you know figuring different things out and figuring out different solutions. You know, whether it be beepers or the indoor-outdoor carpet that we used to lay down. I think um, being focused is just kind of, it comes hand-in-hand hand with an athlete, or at least I think it should, in the sense that, you know, whatever you're doing, whether it be, you know, pole vault, basketball, volleyball, whatever it is, you know, you've got to be focused on it. It doesn't matter what sport it is, um, you need to be focused. So I think that's the biggest factor for me. And you're finishing up your junior year right now. What plans and goals do you have moving forward for your senior year and, and life after high school? Uh, for my senior year, it's going to be a pretty tough schedule. Uh, I have a few college classes that I'm taking online. But um, after high school, uh, I definitely plan to go to university. So I'm not sure if that will be in the state of Texas or not. But I definitely want to run track in college. And so I think uh, from an athletic standpoint, of course, academics are most important to me. And I want to go to the best academic institution that I can find. But I would also like to run track on top of that. So probably the most important thing to me um, athletically is to, to find an institution that's a good fit for me, not only academically, but athletically as well, and in terms of like a coaching standpoint. Charlotte Brown joining us right now on Inside the Athletic Grind. And obviously track is such a big part of your life, Charlotte. Your coach, Jeff Lester, has a daughter named Hallie who is also blind. Can you talk a little bit about the relationship you have with her? Uh, yes, she does have a stepdaughter. Her name's Hallie, and I think she is... She's nine, and so um, she's a little bit younger than me, so she hasn't started, you know, junior high sports or things like that. But um, I think definitely having someone as young as her um, that I think maybe I could help in some way has definitely been beneficial because, you know, I think I didn't set out to inspire people when I started pole vaulting and running track and things like that. I just thought it was something fun to do, but I think if it can impact one person and inspire one person, um, especially a kid, in a positive way, then I think every bump and bruise along the way and every bad day jumping um, and every hard time along the way was definitely worth it. And your story is so courageous. If there's one thing you want people to get out of your your narrative and just how special it's been, what's the one piece of advice or, or one message you want to give to people? I think if I could give one message to people, it would be you know, just get out and do something. It doesn't matter what it is, you know. It doesn't mean, you know, it has to be track or it has to be basketball. You know, it can be, you know, going for a walk when normally you would sit on the couch and watch TV, you know. I guess the biggest thing would be to just go out and do something and to not make excuses for not doing that something, even if it's hard. I think the biggest thing is, you know, you have to make your way around obstacles and not let them stop you, you know. Michael Jordan said, you know, when you come to an obstacle, you know, don't stop. Find a way to climb over it, go around it, crawl through it. And I think that's definitely true. You know, when you come to something, you know, the biggest thing is just, you know, kind of like I said, you got to stare, you know, fear right in the face even if you can't see it. That's some great stuff. Charlotte, we wish you the best of luck in the future. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much again. For Inside the Athletic Grind, I'm Kieran McCauley.